How is everyone? Are you anticipating Christmas? This is just a wonderful time of the year, isn't it? It's the best time of the year because we anticipate the birth of Christ of recognizing and realizing what it is. Uh, the king has come, but guess what? He's coming again. Hallelujah for that. And for Christians, uh, that is something we anticipate. But until that time, we tarry. Uh, until that time, we occupy. Uh, we lift up the name of our Savior so others, too, may know Jesus as their own Savior, too. The one who rescued us out of darkness and brought us into his wonderful life. Uh, this is a time of year where uh, there are those that are more generous, there are those that are more compassionate, and it's all because of the spirit, not of Christmas, but the spirit of Christ that hovers over the earth. You know, even back in 1915, when in World War I, when the, uh, you had the, was it the, the French, the Americans, the Germans, uh, they all saw a truce on Christmas Eve, and they went and they greeted one another. And because of Christ, uh, they wouldn't allow it the following years because of the powers to be uh, wouldn't allow that to continue. But just look what Jesus is. He's the, he's the Prince of Peace. He, he brings peace into the hearts that are, uh, are distraught, that are disturbed, that are shaken. And he comes in and he rules and reigns in hearts and changes and transforms. And so uh, this morning, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and look into the scriptures in Isaiah 9, a prophecy about the king that is coming, the child that was born unto us in chapter 9. <coughs> Isn't it wonderful to see the, the little children are anticipating getting gifts and all that? But the truth of the matter is that the greatest gift Giving was done by God, amen, to God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son. And as you've given the spirit of Christ, it's a wonderful, um, it's an illustration of God's goodness to us, but he wants to give good gifts to his children, doesn't that? He wants to bestow on us uh, the blessings uh, of life and, and the eternal life. But it's a shame that darkness hovers over our country at times of division, uh, where there's dissension. Um, but guess what? Just like in 1915, during World War I, the spirit of Christ could come and give peace uh, to all the world. And the context that we will look at in Isaiah 9 um, was a time when there was great dissension and division in the lands, in the lands of Israel. There was the northern and the southern kingdom, and Assyria, and uh, Assyria was bearing down, uh, and there was fights, and there was wars that were transpiring. And you're going to find that in the midst of this context, that there's a prophecy given that a light is going to dawn in the midst of darkness. And I would think that even in the, the darkened world we're in today, there's hope. You see, regardless of where you're at, there's hope. Amen? Uh, there's always hope when you look to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't... Wherever you have gone, or wherever you have been, or wherever you're at right now, uh, there's hope in the, Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because for those who are in Him, we become a new creation, and the old has passed, and the new has come. There's a new stage to life. There's, a, there's another uh, plane to this life that we think that is here, that we live, uh, you know, from zero to 80 or 90 years, which is only a blimp in the radar screen. You know, Christ came to give us life and give us life abundantly, but eternal life, not just this temporal life. And so as we live the temporal life, we can have joy and hope in the midst of the circumstances and the situations, even if there's dissension and darkness around us. And if you just spark that little light that's within us, because the Bible said that the Jesus came and the life was in him and he was the light of man. And when he is birthed in you, his light shines in the darkness. You see, and it dispels the darkness around us. 
So this Christmas season, let your light shine among all men so that your Father which is in heaven may receive the glory. And then he may see the glimmer in your eyes that you are a Christian and you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how dark it seems, uh, there is hope in Jesus. There, there may be family members you think that feel hopeless. They're, they may be uh, bound over to drugs. They may be bound over to life-controlling problems. Maybe those that are infirmed and with sickness. And These things are very difficult to deal with. These things uh, are devastating when you have a loved one that is sick and, and they pass from this life. But friends, the hope in the Lord Jesus Christ is this, that we will see them again. Praise the Lord. That this place is only temporary. And the, the God that we serve is an eternal God, an everlasting God. The pre Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, is the one whom we serve and the one that we trust in and believe in. So these things that are here that plague us, set our eyes on things that are above, which are heavenward, so we are able to overcome the temporary things that seem to plague humanity at times. Have hope, my friends, this Christmas season. Amen? Amen. So as we look at Isaiah, I want to uh, go through this in chapter 9. Verse 1 says, Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, and when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zumbalum and the land of Napatali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Gal Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multitude the nations, you have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. As a man rejoices when they divide the spoil, for you have broken the yoke of his burden. And in the staff of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor, as in the days of Midian. I just want to stop there for a minute because this is an Old Testament prophecy looking forward. Amen? We are blessed that we can look back to the birth of Christ. Amen? We're looking forward to the return of Christ. They were looking forward to the birth of Jesus. And they were impressed in the land. And they were saying there's going to be a time that's going to come, that there's going to be a light that's going to burst forward. As like in the days of Gideon, because he's talking about Midian. That was the defeat of Midian. And Gideon delivered them out of uh, the Midianites that held them oppressed in the land uh, of Zumbalim, in the, in the land of Napatali. If you remember, uh, uh, Gideon was a mighty warrior. Gideon was a man that was used by God, sent forth to throw off the yoke of the Midianites. Midianites. You hear what it said right there? It says, as in the days that the, the, the Midianites uh, bore down on Israel, uh, their <coughs> oppressor, it will be released off of their necks, that burden. Uh, today, we have great burdens. What was the greatest burden? Was the sin burden. Was the sin debt that needed to be paid. And Christ came and paid that and took the yokes off of people that were heavy laden and overburdened. Uh, the, the prophecy is showing something looking back uh, when Midian came into Israel and oppressed them. You could read this in Judges chapter 6. And it says for seven years, because Israel was not following God wholeheartedly, that he gave them over to the Midianites. And it says that the Midianites, uh, they covered the land that Israel, when they planned for their harvest time, the Midianites would come over and spread themselves out and they would trample on all their harvest. So it was that time of famine. Because you remember where Gideon was found? He was found where? He was found in a, where, in a wine press, trying to harvest uh, his, the wheat, with the freshest wheat in a little wine press. So Gideon uh, was used by God to deliver the Israelites out of a burden. So they're using this example of the force shadow of the prophet of, uh, of when God is going to come and redeem 
those who are walking in darkness, redeem those who are burdened with a yoke on their shoulders. My friend, sin is the greatest yoke. Uh, my friend, the darkness that's overshadowing America today, God is sending forth His light so that He would take the yoke off of those who are walking that are heavy laden, that those are burdened, that He will give them life and give them life abundantly and give them the strength that is needed to overcome because the light is going to dawn where there is darkness. See, right now, if you look around and you even look at the, the face of where our cross is at, all you see is darkness, right? But I'll tell you, if I pull back, this, pull back the shades, my friend, and Jesus burst forth. There's light, you see, and Jesus is the light of the world. And the Bible says that those who follow him shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so he sees that in verse 4, it says, For he hath broken the yoke of his burden and the staff off of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor, as in the days of Midian. I want you to see that he's using this as an example. As in the days of past, that you were heavy yoked, you were hiding, now you're going to be able to walk in the newness of life. Why? Why is that all possible? You'll see. Because it says here, For every warrior's sandal and the... The noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood, it will be used for burning and f fuel or fire. What is that saying there? It's saying those that who had their spears and their, their things for war, they're no longer going to be needed because the Prince of Peace is coming. Amen? Praise the Lord. There's going to be a time when peace is going to reign. Hallelujah. You see, for a Christian, the Prince of Peace rules and reigns in our hearts right now. Glory to God. There may be conflict around you, and too many times we get this wrong. We think that peace is the absence of conflict, and that's not the case. Peace is having the Prince of Peace rule in your heart, amen? So you're able to deal with whatever conflict there might be. Because Jesus even said, in this world you will have trial and tribulation. You'll have these difficulties and conflicts. But he said, be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. So those who are in Christ, as we see in 1 John, who is he who overcomes the world? Only he who has faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Friends, the King is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. The King is coming. So look what it says. Because of all these things, I wanted to lead up to this prophecy here. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be or will be on his shoulders. Uh, we see this prophecy down in Matthew, we see it in Luke, uh, we see it when the shepherds, they're called to go ahead and, and go to the town of Bethlehem. What does it say? Today in the where in the town of David, a Savior has been born. A child has been born unto us. Why? He will be the Savior of the world. Praise the Lord. Prophecies being fulfilled. And it says the government will be on His shoulders. I don't know about you, but that's an exciting verse for me. That's an exciting verse that God is the ruler of all things and He at one time when Jesus returns and sets up his kingdom on this earth, he will be the ruler of the earth and we will be under his shoulder. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years and the government will be on his shoulders. And if his rule shall never end. It is not an eight-year rule. It's not a temporal rule. It's not by election. <clears throat> no. It's a monarch. Because he is our king. And he is our Lord. He is our Savior. And his name will be called Wonderful. Wonderful. Counselor. You know, Jesus in prophecy before he left this earth, while he walked in his ministry 33 years, he said that I will not leave you as orphans. 
but I will send one back, will be your counselor. The Holy Spirit is our counselor today. Not only does he comfort us, walk with us, but he reminds us of everything that Jesus had spoken. The counselor, the one who advises us, the one who gives us wisdom, because he becomes our wisdom, our sanctification, and our righteousness, Jesus. Why? He's mighty God. He's God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the prophecies that Jesus himself spoke about came to fulfillment in these verses. And I asked Joey, I gave him a passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 4 to go ahead and read this for us. Go ahead, Joe, from 4, chapter 4, Matthew, verses 12 through 17. Listen to this. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee, leaving Nazareth, and went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From the time, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. Why is, it, why is it important to see in scripture be fulfilled? Amen. Because God, what God said will be so. Isn't that a wonderful thing? What has transpired as what God has spoken have come to pass. Isaiah was prophesying 700 plus years before Jesus was even born. There's too many passages of, of scripture or prophecy. I think Pat already said 330. How many is it, Pat? 331 prophecies about Christ's birth and his reign. Uh, the prophecies are of God's word, you can stand and build your life on. It's exciting to see them coming to, to pass. We're living in a wonderful time, are we not? Uh, Jesus himself said that this was fulfilled, the prophecy of Isaiah. Uh, for See, he was living in, you know, he was where? Born in Bethlehem, but he lived in Nazareth, right? But after John the Baptist was put in, in prison, now who was John the Baptist? He was the forerunner, right? He was a relative to Jesus in the earth, he said, but he was a forerunner. He says, I prepare the way for the one who is coming. Make way for what? The king. Make way for the king. He is coming. Praise the Lord. He said, if there's any obstacles in the way, move them out. Make the crooked road straight. You see, as Jesus is going to be birthed this coming Christmas, if, you, if it's for the first time uh, you're, you're hearing that, you need to make way for the king, right? But how do we make right way for the kingdom of God is at hand? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Prepare for the king. Amen. You see, there are, there are many who have no room for him. You see, Jesus is knocking at all the doors. He says, you know, I knock at the door. And anyone who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. See, Jesus is knocking on all the doors of hearts. And there when he was, uh, Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, and Mary was getting ready to, to deliver. Uh, they needed a place for Mary to deliver. And no one gave room for Jesus. And I thought about that statement. Think about it today. Uh, the word of the Lord goes across the ages that Jesus is the only way to salvation. There is no other way. There is no other name given to heaven and earth which man must be saved. And yet they reject it. They have no room for Jesus. And Jesus was born in a manger, in a place, in a trough. Uh, they laid the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of all creation, was birthed among animals. Now, sometimes I think that the stable and the hearts of man have a lot in common. Because it is a dirty place. 
in our hearts, but yet God chose to have His Son birth in the heart. Even though that our hearts are wicked and deceitful among all things, God saw fit to put His Son in our hearts. Praise the Lord. And God saw fit that even though man had rejected Him, He still continues to woo them. How many of you know how many of you know that have rejected this message? Do you think God had given up on them? Praise the Lord, He does not give up. Praise the Lord, God is hunting them down the hound of heaven. If, be of good cheer, my friends. If you have loved ones today, you have those that are astray, trust this. Lift up in prayer, God. Seek them out that God is still wooing them. Because God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten Son. God doesn't want one person to perish, my friend. See, that is really the Christmas message. Even though humanity refuses and rejects God, God does not refuse or reject them. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I, that is the most wonderful thing that you could ever hear, amen? amen. Because if you, if you look back at your own heart, my heart was hard against the things of God. Oh, I knew there was a God, but I had someone else on the throne. It was called me. You see, me, myself, and I. And there really was no room for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But God pursued me. In my lowest times, He still loved me. When everyone else rejected me and turned their back on me, God loved me and called me. He says, I have loved you with everlasting love. He said, I have called you with love and kindness. That's the God we serve. That's the King that we serve. That is the Jesus that we love. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He came to seek and save which was lost. See, humanity was lost and is lost. And there's only one remedy. There is not many roads that some want you to believe. I know not here, but you hear that. Oh, that can't be right. You know, Christians sometimes, you, you, you're exclusive in things. Friends, we're not exclusive. It's what the Word of God, it's what the prophecies declare. It's what we know to be true because the King of Kings not only has come, but He's coming again and He lives within us. And we bear witness to the King of Kings by the life that we now walk and live. The Bible says this. This is the message that we heard from the beginning. God is light and in Him there is no darkness. Now if we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie. We don't live by the truth. How could we say that we love our brothers or we say we love God and not love our brothers at times? Can that be true? See, I say this around Christmas time, right? Because it's a time where we need to really examine our hearts. Really a time where it's uh, a time of giving shows the greatest expression of Christ's likeness to others, isn't it? God gave to us the greatest gift of all. And as we uh, express that love and extend the grace and, and extend the, the hand, it's not always a, a monetary giving, is it? It is this giving uh, Christ that's in us to others. You know, <clears throat> being a little more compassionate to someone, uh, listening to them a little more, sharing with them a life that God has given us back because we were lost. I don't know about you, I'm going to speak for myself. I was lost. I walked in darkness. And His life that He placed within me, I'm for eternally thankful and grateful. You know, this time of the year is always an exciting time, but it could be a time where we start to feel the weariness because of the loss of maybe loved ones around this time of the year, the, the, the times of 
maybe there's been broken relationships this time of the year. And, uh, but I, I want to encourage you, don't look to the past or look to the situation. It's not that we want to forget those things or forget those and Look to the one who has life. Because John the Baptist, he was, they said, the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. And we find in Matthew 11 that we find that John, when he was placed in prison, this is all in context we're talking, we just read in, in Matthew 4. When he was put in prison, guess what? He said to his disciples, he said, go ask Jesus if he, if he, is, if he is the one. Because there's times when we go through struggles of life where we have some doubts, where we have struggles, especially when we're in a place of darkness. John the Baptist, because Herod, uh, the patriarch, put him in prison because John spoke out about the way that Herod was living his life. He had his brother Philip's <coughs> wife. And so uh, John was put in prison. And he spent some time in prison. It says that it might have been six months or so before the context of uh, um, Matthew 4 transpired where Jesus was taken out to the desert and there tested. And then this word was spoken. And I thought about that. Jesus, the light of the world. If you are the light of the world, why do these things transpire? And you sit and you pause. And if you read Matthew 11, Jesus said this, go back and tell John these things. That the dead are raised, the blind shall see, the deaf hear. Glory to God, the King has come. That's what he says. That's what he said. So when you doubt, and when you see things in darkness, and you feel overwhelmed with your situation and your circumstances, say this. The blind see. The deaf hear. The parallel paralyzed, walk, and the dead are raised, the dead. What a blessing. The king has come, and he's coming again. And listen to the last verse here. Verse 7 of Isaiah. <coughs> I just stop for a second. You know it's exciting when you when you see the thread of scripture. The, see, I, I love connecting all those dots. You see, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing if you if you study through them. You know, and we could probably take what has been spoken today and decipher it for the next six months and go through it. What a wonderful thing! So I hope and pray I I am able to shed a little bit of light, on a little bit of what is spoken. Here's the last verse, and we'll go ahead and close. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Aren't you glad of that? And on the throne of David of his kingdom, to the order and establish it, and judgment and justice, from that time forward, even but forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will see to it. God Almighty will see to these prophecies. God Almighty will see to that it is done. Every jot, every tittle, every word that's in here, God will see to it that it is done. Not one of God's good promises, my friends, have failed. Glory to God, you can stake your life on it. You can stake your life on it. Glory to God. Uh, why is this a wonderful time of year? The King is coming, and He has come. He rules and reigns in our hearts. He saw fit that even though that we were lost and walking in darkness, that He called us into His great life. What a wonderful thing, my friend. A time to enjoy Christmas with one another, to celebrate the birth of Christ, but to celebrate the new birth. Because you may know about the scripture, you may know about Jesus being born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, 
But the one thing I'm concerned about, has Jesus been born in you? That is the question. So today we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith, we test ourselves. Because the Bible says, or don't you know that the Lord Jesus Christ lives within you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Now, if you fail the test, there's great news. The Bible says, let today be the day of your salvation. Today is the day of the opportunity. Praise the Lord. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let today be the day that you trust Him. Let God's word be true and every man be alive. So I'm going to pray a prayer and then I'm going to have John come up and we're going to go ahead and close. And Judy. Father, we are so thankful that you sent your son on a rescue mission. Father, we were all dead in sins and transgressions. But because of what Christ has done, we have been redeemed. For those who repented and put their trust in what the Lord Jesus has done on Calvary two, three, two thousand years ago, he was placed on the cross for our sins, but then he was raised to life for our justification. And if you believe that this morning and you trust Jesus to be your Savior, the Bible says that we too may be saved, that we too may be born again. And then Jesus will be born in our hearts. So bless each one today, O oh God. I pray they rule, or they recognize, Lord, what has been spoken. They will receive the gracious gift that you have for all of us. And Lord, all we can say is thank you. Thank you for that free gift of salvation. And if that's you here this morning, please let someone know or let me know that I might pray for you. And I might stand beside you and encourage you. Father, what a blessing it is to be born again, to be redeemed, to have new life, and have the light of the world placed within us. And we pray this now in the name of the Lord Jesus.